Special shout out to Bill Carpenter who put this together for me. He's a blacksmith in Kentucky and he wanted to create a specialized shiv for after prison shows. It's got like a little lanyard and a little thing on it. That way if I ever had one of these in prison and I was stabbing, stabbing, stabbing somebody, I wouldn't ever lose it. Ha! What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about some really crazy things. Crazy! It's Friday today, I just went to the P.O. Box, I picked up some really awesome things, and with these things that I did pick up from the P.O. Box, it gave me a great idea for a video, and in this video, what I'm gonna be talking to you guys about are books that prisoners are not allowed to have. And there's a really important reason why prisoners are not allowed to have these certain kinds of books. I'm gonna tell you all about that in this video, as well as show you guys one other really awesome thing that I just got lately, and it's actually going to be part of an upcoming video uh, that we're gonna be doing here real soon on After Prison Show. So without further ado, what do you say we just go ahead and dive head first into this video. The first thing that I want to say again is thank you to everybody who continues to show so much love and support for After Prison Show, and especially to all of those who send so many awesome things to the P.O. Box. Every week we get tons of letters, tons of gifts, and little packages, and things that all of you guys out there create for After Prison Show, and I do try to include as much of that in the background behind me as I can, because again, it really does mean a lot to me. But today when I went to the P.O. Box, not only did I get this really awesome custom made prison shiv, I also got a book as well. And I know what you're probably thinking, you're like, Jesus Christ Joe, a book. Actually, yeah, yeah, a book. And this is a really important book because of the simple fact that this book actually reminded me of the fact that this was one of the banned books, books that prisoners were not allowed to get while locked up. And I'm gonna tell you all about this book and why it's banned and a few others as well that are also banned. So this book in particular that was sent to me by an awesome fan by the name of Clayton from Houston, Texas, he not only sent me this book, he also sent me uh, these two CDs as well. A Pimp C CD and also a, what is this? A Zero Meth CD. Haven't had a chance to check out either one of these yet, but I promise I will be checking these out soon. But back to this book, the name of this book is actually, I'm not really sure that you can read that. The name of this book is called The Art of Seduction by Robert Greene. By the way, Clayton also sent me a note along with the book and CDs. He said, can you please tell my girlfriend Kate she sucks. Hey Kate, Clayton says you suck. The Art of Seduction by Robert Greene. Why is this book banned in prisons? Not only did Robert Greene write The Art of Seduction, he also wrote a book by the name of 48 Laws of Power, which also is banned. And another book in this same wheelhouse that is also banned is by Sun Tzu called The Art of War. Now these books may not be banned in every single facility across the United States or even around the world, but here in old Virginia, uh, these are definitely some banned books. And the reason for this is because of the fact that I guess these prisons think that if you read these books, well then you're just gonna become like this Casanova superpower human being who has the ability to just change the way people think at any given time. Maybe by reading these books you'll become like a psychological genius. 48 Laws of Power is basically a book with 48 laws that I guess are supposed to make you more powerful. But that book definitely gives you like some insight into how to deal with people in any given situation. So I guess that's where the whole powerful thing comes from. The Sun Tzu book, The Art of War that I mentioned, this is basically a book about how to deal with your enemies during war, how to prepare for war, how to catch your enemy off guard, supposedly teaching you how to be a better soldier, a better warrior, a ninja, whatever, commander or commando, I don't know. But it's also a banned book as well because they don't want people reading reading this book thinking they have the capability to now take over the world. But this book in particular, The Art of Seduction, this is also another big no-no in Virginia State Prisons because of the fact that this book is supposed to be able to teach you the art of seduction. In fact, I'll go ahead and just give you a brief little glimpse into what is featured in this book just by reading the back of this book. And some of the things that you can learn from this book, supposedly, how to choose the right victim. My God, I'm wondering, did Austin Jones possibly read this book? <laughs> Pedophile, oh my God. Excuse me, I, I just had to sneeze right there. Create a full sense of security. Really? How is this dealing with seduction at all? 
approach indirectly. Oh, excuse me, I didn't expect to be bumping into you here. Send mixed signals. I don't even know what that means. Oh, yes, I do. I mean, no, I don't. I, you know what? I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Is that is that a mixed signal? Appear to be an object of desire. How in the fuck do you appear to be an object of desire? I don't even know how I would possibly do that if I was trying to. I would just be sitting in the corner somewhere of a Barnes and Nobles or maybe at the beach just like, hey, funny running into you here. Or no, it's not. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. That's a mixed signal, and I'm an object of desire. What the fuck am I doing? Create triangles. What? <laughs> Create triangles? What is that like? Are we part of the dynasty now? Create a need stir, anxiety, and discontent. I, what? Master the art of insinuation. The fuck is insinuation? Are you insinuating? What are you trying to insinuate? Enter their spirit. Um, excuse me, I'm not really sure how to how to say this, but I feel I may have possibly entered your spirit. This is insanity to me right here. And it just continues to go on. I mean, create temptation. Keep them in suspense. What comes next? I tend to do that pretty well here with the After Prison Show. Maybe I should use the art of seduction here with the After Prison Show. Use the demonic power of words to sow confusion. The demonic power of words? My God, what the fuck did this just turn? Did this just turn into like the Antichrist? Am I okay to be reading this? I may actually understand why this book might be banned from Department of Corrections here in the state of Virginia now. Use the demonic power of words to sow confusion. And, uh, and last, pay attention to detail. I mean, they probably just ran out of ideas from all of the bullshit that they were spewing through this book. And they were like, damn, we need one more chapter. What the fuck could it be? I got it. Pay attention to detail. Oh, wait, there was a whole nother section of things that this book goes on to uh, include as well. But I won't sit here and continue to bore you with that. And again, special thanks to Clayton for sending me this book. I actually want to take this book out with me one night. I remember like a, a couple of weeks ago, I went and tried to get rejected by a bunch of girls. It didn't really work out too well. And people were saying that I was catcalling as well. But I wonder if I take this book out with me and I I just start reading from this book to women that I'm approaching. Hey, excuse me, could you spare five minutes, please? I'd just like to read you an excerpt, an excerpt from this book. Appear to be an object of desire, create triangles. Few are drawn to the person whom others avoid or neglect. People gather around those who have already attracted interest. We want what other people want. To draw your victims closer and make them hungry to possess you. Um, what? So there's a big reason why this book in particular is banned from Department of Corrections here in Virginia, and that is because of the fact that they don't want prisoners getting their hands on this book, thinking they're going to have the ability to use the power of demonic words to sow confusion with staff especially. So I guess in the minds of the prison, uh, this book, it's a big no-no because if prisoners do ever get their hands on this book, my God, can you imagine what would happen if prisoners got their hands on the art of subduction? Every member of female staff in this prison may become pregnant. I can't wait to read this book from cover to cover. And I really want to hear what you guys have to say about this book. Have you ever read it? Have you ever heard about it? Would you read it? And if none of the above apply, well then what do you think just from these things that I've told you about just reading the back of this book? Do you honestly think that you can read a book and it's going to help you be more powerful, more prepared for war, or more lucky with the ladies? I do really want to hear what you guys have to say, and please leave a comment down below letting me know just that. And also, real quick, before we move on, I just want to tell you guys about some other books that prisoners aren't allowed to have and why. Now, in every single state, this is different. Every state has its own individual prisoners banned book list, and books and magazines make these lists for whatever reason. But each individual state does have its own rules and what they feel is too sensitive of content for prisoners to have their hands on. And these could just be regular novels as well, like books about kids getting molested and shit like that. Now, I don't know why a fucking prisoner would want to read a book like this. Other books would include porn books. And I'm not just talking about porn magazines and pictures. I'm talking about like erotic novels. There are definitely a lot of erotic novels that are on the banned list. 
Penthouse has its own erotic novels, books that are definitely on this banned list. And I mean, you just have to imagine, they don't want prisoners who are reading these books at nighttime and, and possibly just getting a little too excited. They might be reading these books like, you know, there are no women in here, but there is my bunkie. Hey, just checking to see if you were still awake. Don't ever go to prison. Aside from that, other books and periodicals that are banned could include things like fitness magazines that may have too raunchy of pictures in them or articles that they really don't want prisoners reading. Even newspaper articles can be banned in prisons uh, if they pertain to something very sensitive in nature like within the prison systems or just things that they're really just trying to keep out of the ears and away from the eyes of prisoners. And it's crazy to think Porn already by itself is something that's banned, but to just think about books, things that you can read that are banned, and the reason why they are banned being that they don't want prisoners becoming too powerful from the information possibly contained within those pages. As I get ready to wrap this video up, I do want to show you guys one last really cool thing. A week ago, I was out and I met this dude. He was awesome, covered in tattoos. He came up to me and Connor and we just began to talk. And it's kind of crazy because we didn't know who this guy was at first at all. But he came up and just began talking with us. And while talking with this individual, we learned that he had been in prison too. He had spent quite a bit of time in prison. But the first thing that struck me about this whole situation is the fact that how you can just kind of see, even if you don't know who a person is, you can really get a good idea if that guy has been to prison or not. And I guess that was probably what he saw looking at me and Connor, because people who have been in prison can definitely pinpoint other people who have been in prison, whether they know them or not. But this guy did come up, began talking with me and Connor. We then began to trade a few war stories, and I asked him what he had been doing since being released from prison. And what this guy does for a living now is just probably one of the most awesome jobs I've ever heard of any guy coming home from prison doing out here in the free world. And what he actually does is, he's a professional artist. He creates his own custom painted surfboard. And when I learned of this, I thought this was like the most awesome thing in the world. He began to show me the stuff that he created right there on his phone. And I actually was able to get one of these custom painted surfboards from him. And I do want to show you guys what this looks like, what this guy who has spent a lot of time in prison, who is now released from prison, is doing out here in the free world and just let this really resonate with you that no matter what anything is possible anything that you want to do anything that you want to achieve anything that you dream you can make it happen so long as you continue to put forth the effort to reach whatever it is that you're chasing after Is that not the coolest damn thing ever? I mean, this thing is super awesome. This guy who is creating these surfboards, we've been in contact quite frequently, and I am trying to feature him on After Prison Show very soon. I actually want to go visit his workshop, see how he creates these things, and maybe even see if I could create one myself with him. I think that would be a really awesome experience, and I hope that is something that I'm able to bring to you guys real soon. Hey look, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about all of this. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!